Hello everyone. For a recent arrival of my Xbox One Series X, before Christmas, I know right, Australia Post actually pulled their thumb out of their arse for once. So I just thought I'd make a quick video just to let you guys know what I think of it and whether or not you should get it. Just two things straight off the bat I've got to mention. A, I'm not endorsed by any of the companies I may mention. And secondly, though some people, whenever there's a new console, they say, oh, it's going to be like a PC. Don't listen to them. This is not a PC. This is a console. You must set your expectations accordingly. Okay, with that done, let's get started. One of the first things I noticed when opening a box was the incredible claim of 120 frames at 4K. Now anyone who games on PC knows that even with a 3090 or low settings, you'd probably only just be getting 120. And on bigger games like Warzone, you could expect even less. And also, the other thing I noticed when I pulled out the controller is that how well built and good quality it actually is. All the movements feel nice and smooth. You've got even stippled grip tape on the triggers and on the um, handles. And it just feels real smooth and good. The D-pad also finally looks like it might actually work. I know, it's a miracle. It they took them, what, 15 years? But overall, it's a very well-built controller. However, I haven't thrown it at a wall yet, so I can't tell you how durable it is. However, there are some downsides. As I quickly found out, the controller has a different USB port. It's no longer Samsung. However, if you're a tradie, especially a mechanic, you might be in luck. The USB charger on the Series X is actually the same as a snap-on USB charger. So have a look in the workshop and grab that if you got one. Despite lecturing us on environmentalism, and the fact that we're in the year 2020, Microsoft still hasn't actually released a rechargeable battery pack. But more disappointment was to come. I plugged my Series X into my 1440p 144Hz monitor and oh. For some reason it was displaying at 1080. And when I went into the settings, I was further horrified to see that my 144Hz display was somehow incompatible with displaying 120Hz, which is weird because later on I went into my PC using the exact same cable and ports and hey presto, sure enough it's capable of 120Hz. So instead I'll hook it up to my old 60Hz 4K display that I used for my Xbox One X. I must admit, before I purchased a PC, I really love playing 4K on my Xbox One X. I used to absolutely love it, despite the fact I was probably only getting 30 frames per second. However, ever since I got a PC, it's all been about frames. There's a sweet spot with 1440p resolution, which seems to allow decent frames without sacrificing too much visual clarity. However, 4K is just a bit excessive. Currently, there's just the tech just isn't there for us to render 4K at a decent competitive frame rate. And the advantages of the 4K resolution uh, it just aren't enough to justify the drop in frames. Some for some reason, uh, I think Microsoft and Sony have sort of uh, not got that message yet. And that is the biggest difference between this Xbox and a PC. I actually asked Jack Frags during one of his streams what he could compare it to and he said it was roughly a 2080 performance. Now you'd reckon that would be great for 1440p but with the focus on 4K you're sort of losing frames. It's as if uh, the Microsoft and Sony have been too busy listening to their marketing department to realise 1440p should be the benchmark for competitive gaming. And well yes while 4K will be one day the benchmark, it isn't today. We'll be looking at 4K when everyone else is looking at 8K. That just seems to be the way things are. It's kind of ironic really. The Series X compared to my budget gaming PC, it's about a quarter of the size, over twice the power, yet in terms of usability, my PC wins hands down. Hell, on PC you can run 8K ultra settings at 5 frames per second if you wanted to, yet at console you're always going to be stuck with the defaults. Maybe with the next gen games they might give us some options to up or lower the 
resolution and the graphics depending on if you're single player or multiplayer but for now we're locked in all that negativity aside let's look at the positives this game battlefield 5 is a very high demanding game on the graphics and yet it runs very damn smoothly at 60 frames per second i would dare say it's bang on the limiter at 60 frames there just incredibly fluid smooth movement and to put things into perspective my pc i can't even play battlefield 5 on it because it's just not competitive i'd be lucky to get 60 70 frames per second at low settings and if i was to try run 4k battlefield 5 on my pc i doubt i'd even get 30 frames per second and good luck getting me any kills with that so overall the xbox one X, series x why do they have to maim so similar it's so frustrating but overall it is definitely a massive upgrade on the one x and also it's incredible value too for what you're getting like you can't even buy a 2080 card for the price of the series x and there's even the option if you're a poor person such as myself slaving away in the fields you can even do a subscription service via telstra which is what i did with a Series X you're looking at about $46 a month for 24 months so you do pay a bit more overall but you get don't have to have the upfront fee. To wrap it up I would recommend the Series X for A it's incredible price point, B it's availability unlike the PS5 which no one can get and also C it offers an incredible advantage and step forward for consoles console players won't know themselves if they can get a monitor that runs 120 frames which mine can't so if you do buy one bear that in mind even if you do have a monitor which is capable of running 120 hertz it may not be compatible and i honestly don't know how you can tell if it'd be compatible or not there are benefits to both casual and competitive players if you game competitively on xbox you need this console if you game casually on Xbox you might consider buying it because it will offer excellent frames at 4K which means most single player games look beautiful and play beautiful. So there you have it folks, it's a thumbs up from Rage here. As always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video which might be about skill based matchmaking or might be a Christmas special, I'm not sure yet. I'll figure it out while I'm bored at work as usual. 